G'day and welcome to this week's episode of the AFL Riverina Football and Netball Show. We've got a huge lineup for this week's edition. We catch up with the Farrah Football League representative coach, Gerald Peeper, and the Riverina representative football coach, Troy Maiden. First up, I'm joined by footy operations manager, Shane Buchanan, to talk all things from the weekend. Shane, welcome. Let's start with the Riverina Footy League. The biggest story for you out of the weekend. Oh, no doubt, Matt. The, um, the big win by Wagga Tigers over Narandra. Uh, the scoreline was probably uh, a little bit larger than what I expected. Uh, I actually tipped Narandra to get over top of the Tigers, especially in the wet conditions as well. I thought perhaps Narandra's team, being perhaps a little bit more experienced team, heavier bodies, in the wet conditions, I thought they may have got over Wagga Tigers. But to Wagga Tigers' credit, their young players, um, a lot of the likes of Gunning, um, Carroll, etc., really uh, rose to the occasion and um, obviously played big games and um, ran the ball really well by all account and had a massive win against the, uh, against the Narandra Imperials. Yeah, the Tigers youth definitely looking good going forward. They'll definitely be a team to beat. Uh, uh, heading into the second half of the year, we uh, cross over to the Farrah Footy League. Uh, plenty of interesting scores happening over the weekend. What's your story uh, from, from the Farrah Footy League? Yeah, I suppose tomorrow in East Wagga was the game of interest there, I suppose. Tomorrow kept on, on their merry way, I suppose, putting another good win away. East Wagga do have the do have the players and the and the game style to cause a big upset. They've just got to be, be, be more consistent in what they're actually doing, and they'll need to work on that. And no doubt Chris Jackson will be working on that. Huge game coming up for tomorrow in a couple of weeks' time against the Northern Jets at home. We're going to swing straight into the representative football. We start at the Riverina Footy League. Uh, they are taking on the Sydney development team. Um, what are your thoughts for the Riverina rep side? Yeah, look, the Riverina rep side um, has, has um, trained really well and prepared really well. So, look, I think um, they'll go into that game fairly confident. Uh, the Sydney team is, in a, is a development team, uh, so the Riverina boys will have more probably experience across the board, and I think they should get out of the top of the Sydney team. The uh, Farrah Footy League uh, rep side looks a strong one. Uh, they take on the boys from the Black Diamond Football League. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, same thing again. I mean, um, well, I think it was two years ago, uh, the Farrah League played Black Diamond in Newcastle. It was a good close tussle. It was close. So I'm expecting Farrah League, again, to go into this game as probably favourites, probably being at home sort of thing, but the margin's going to be small. I think the, these two, two, two leagues will be very competitive, but I think the Farrah boys should get over them being at home. OK, thanks for that, Shane. We look forward to two very tight and competitive games of footy rep, game, rep games over the weekend. Thanks to Shane Buchanan for that analysis. We look forward to two close contests at Robo Oval this Sunday. I'm now joined by the Riverina Football League representative coach, Troy Maiden. Troy, thanks for joining us. Good to be here, mate. We're going to start with the forward line. Uh, overall, this side looks very strong, but the forward line just seems to have the right balance. You've got uh, the big key forwards up there, complemented with some real uh, talented smalls, uh, a couple of goal sneaks. Um, looks very dangerous up forward. Yeah, look, mate, we think it'll be a strength of ours. Obviously, you've got guys like Mark Geppert, uh, Lou Roberts, Ryan Price is in good form for Mangaplar, and then you throw in a, a small like a Mitch, uh, Mitch O'Brien from Coolerman that's kicking his three or four goals every week as well. So, yeah, we think it'll be fairly strong. Uh, the midfield in particular looks uh, d dynamite. I mean, you've got some real hard nuts in there. And then, uh, look, you've chosen uh, well with the wingers. Uh, plenty of boys with pace that uh, can get the ball on the outside and, and get it in long to the forwards. Yeah, look, I, I think what we've gone for is to get some bigger bodies around the contested footy and then, yeah, look for that spread on the outside, so some pace. And I think we'll have a little bit of height around our wings too, which will be handy for us with the likes of, you know, Flanagan and maybe a Dan Kennedy from Collin Gully. But, uh, yeah, look, our inside mids, like a Guy Orton and those guys, uh, Jamie Maddox, that's where we'll get our real leadership from, I think. Well, it seems like something you've really uh, gone hard for, something you've concentrated on, is that contested footy. I mean, if you can win the contested ball, it's going to go a long way to winning the game. And the boys you've got in those key areas seem to be um, those that have done the job throughout the season so far. Yeah, look, and that's, that's probably the bonus we've got. We've got a lot of those players in good form. But we played this same side two years ago, and, and that was a big advantage I think we had, was our, our body strength around the contested footy. So we've sort of looked at that again, I guess. And of course, down back, I mean, you've got the ever-reliables down there, but it seems like um, you, you're going to have the opposition covered, whether they're tall or small. And I think, too, looking at the, uh, at the side, there's plenty of um, boys who are, uh, are quite good at rebounding off the defensive 50 as well. Yeah, look, we think um, with our back line, we want that to be the springboard for our attack, obviously. And, and guys like Murray Stevenson, maybe Ben Absalom, John Anstey, John Simpson, these guys give us a lot of run out of there, but can do a really good lockdown job in need as well. What are you expecting from this Sydney development team? Uh, they seem to have a fair bit of talent in their side as well. Um, no doubt going to be a tough contest. 
Yeah, look, I think uh, they're going to be young, they're going to be enthusiastic, um, and they're going to be quick. So we need to match them in those areas and be better in those areas if we want to win the game. I guess the key factor here is Robertson Oval. A lot of boys in the development squad have now played at Robertson Oval. It's big, plenty of space, we all know that. Uh, obviously something you'd like to play to the advantage of your, of your side, perhaps run your opposition uh, ragged, particularly in the first half. Yeah, and look, I think that's that's sort of what we're looking at as well with our outside pace. We want some guys that can cover the ground pretty well and, and we'll just have things set up, hopefully, to suit Robbo pretty well. Uh, no doubt a, uh, a strong start as well. Um, obviously, the Sydney development side are going to come out fired up. Um, they know your boys are going to be a pretty tough uh, opposition. Um, so, look, that first quarter, you really do have to jump out of the gates well. Yeah, look, we want to be really aggressive early on, um, try and put them on the back foot and, and play to our strengths, I suppose, which is going to be our body size and our aggression around the footy. And, uh, look, we spoke about the forward line. Um, just in terms of uh, the game plan, we don't want to give too much away, but uh, will it be a direct style of footy, uh, a possession game where we just try and hold on to the ball for as much of it as we can, or just in a broader terms, what, what are the plans? Yeah, look, Matt, we want to play fairly direct, I suppose. We're going to have a, pretty, a couple of pretty good key marking targets up forward, so we don't want to sort of get caught going too wide with Robertson Oval now being fairly wide ground. So we'll be looking to, to get the ball back through the middle sort of at every opportunity, I guess. Yeah, look, Troy, thanks for joining us. Uh, like I said, the side looks very strong on paper. Hopefully they can uh, bring their, their A game to to Robo Oval on Sunday and have a win in this uh, rep game against the Sydney development team. Thanks, Matt. Huge thanks to Troy Maiden, the Riverina Football League representative coach, for joining us there. Massive insight into how the boys might go on Sunday afternoon. I'm now joined by the Farrah Football League representative coach, Gerald Peeper, to talk all things representative side for the Farrah League. Gerald, welcome. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Let's, uh, let's start with the forward line for the Farrah League as well. Uh, likewise with the Riverina League, looks very, very strong. Good balance, uh, plenty of marking power up there. And uh, plenty of smalls on the ground to perhaps kick the goals from the boundary if needed. Yes, Matt, we, we've got uh, three strong forwards that have been playing very well for, the rep, for their uh, footy side, uh, local team. Uh, and uh, in Luke Webb um, is working very hard for the Rock. Mitch Ward, who was uh, the Farrah best player last year against the Sydney Development Squad, who kicked six goals against them. So we're hoping that he'll uh, shape up again this year. And uh, Michael Foster from the Northern Jets, who's uh, certainly uh, finishing off the play for them at this stage up forward. So we have three good targets up there, and they'll be moving around in different positions in the forward line and finishing it off for us. Yeah, no doubt. I've seen uh, a bit of Webby and uh, Mitch Ward and Foster all throughout the early, early part of the year. All three have been in great form. Hopefully together they can really complement each other. I want to change things up, swing down to the other end of the ground. Defensively, obviously going to be really important as well. I want to try and keep the uh, Black Diamond League to a, a minimum score. Yep. Um, it does look a, a strong defence. Uh, how, do, how do we expect that they're going to go? Oh, it does. I mean, again, uh, as Troy mentioned earlier, a, spring, a springboard to our attack across our half-back line. We have some good running players across there, good link players. Uh, uh, in uh, Dale Hugo, who will uh, work well across there for us on the half-back line. Um, and the captain of the side, Chris Block, across the half-back. We have two, a couple of younger players that are likely to line up across the, uh, the full-back line. And, uh, and they've been playing quite well in uh, Troy Curtis for North Wagga and Drew Campton for The Rock. Uh, the boys are young players and they've fitted into the squad very well. Yeah, Campton and Curtis, two uh, obvious standouts from early in the year. A couple of the younger boys really flying the flag uh, in their respective sides. Good to see them... Uh, get a run for the representative side. I want to talk about the midfield. Now, we discussed Robertson Oval before with uh, the Riverina rep side. Yes. Uh, the key here is big open spaces. You've uh, also found a nice balance in the way that uh, you've got those inside midfielders there to win the contested footy uh, in the clinches. Uh, but there's also plenty of speed on the outside when the ball comes out to be able to deliver that forward. Oh, we have, Matt, yes. And, and you'll find that most of the players across our, our centre line and on the ball are, are, are the better players for their club. They're sort of winning the ball week in, week out type of thing. So we hopefully we can be strong enough around the ball. Um, I thought Black Diamond didn't do too bad in the first half against uh, Riverina Football League last year in, in that area. So we, we will need to uh, just get our game going early around the ball, get the ball in, into our forward line quickly and give our uh, leading targets the opportunity up forward. I think one of the key aspects of this side that uh, stands out to me is you've got guys that can not only get the footy, 
but can are very good users of the ball as well. And I think on Robbo with those spaces, which I've now mentioned three or four times, is the, the ball use, the disposal by foot and by hand. You've got guys that hit targets on a regular basis. It's a consistency thing, and, uh, and no doubt that'll be a key here as well, using the ball well. Uh, it is it's important for our uh, players around the ball to give those outside players the opportunity and the space to be able to do that. And if we can do that, yes, and use the ball to our advantage first, uh, yeah, I'm sure they, uh, our forward players will finish off the play for us there. And just one last one as well. I mean, no doubt a four-quarter performance is in order here. You uh, you really can't expect to take on the Black Diamond Footy League, uh, play half a game and expect to get the win here, can we? Uh, no, Matt. No, and again, reflecting on last year, uh, we, we had a, a very good first half against the Sydney Development Squad. Uh, we fell away in the second half and they, they finished on top of us. So hopefully this year we'll get a good start and can maintain that on the way through. Thanks to Gerald Peeper there, the coach of the Farrah Football League representative side. Just a reminder that the Farrah Football League representative side kicks things off this Sunday at Robertson Oval at 11am. That game will be followed by the Riverina Football League representative side taking on the Sydney Development team at 2pm sharp. The netballers will also be getting busy on the netball courts. We've got the under-17 Riverina Netball League versus the under-17 Farrah Netball League starting at midday, followed by the Open Girls Riverina Netball League taking on the Open Girls from the Farrah Netball League starting at 1.30. Make sure you get out and support all the boys and the girls playing their footy and their netball. As I said, that's pretty much all we have time for for this week's episode. Best of luck to both the representative sides. Hopefully they can get the points. We'll see you again next week.